Good day, YouTubers. This is the third and final episode in the mini series on building a mount and a min coder to my baseboards. I started this project by doing some CAD drawings up of what I wanted to build, and I've now modified them to reflect what I finally ended up with. I'm not an architect or engineer or anything like that, but if you'd like a copy of the drawings, I'll send you a copy so that you can see how I went about doing it. All you need to do is subscribe to my channel and PM my Facebook page, ask for a copy of the plans, and include the YouTube username that you use to subscribe to my channel with. Between having the plans and watching the videos, you should be able to figure out how to modify it to suit your boat. And that's exactly what I'm going to talk about in this video. I just want to touch on some of the things you need to consider if you're going to modify the plans to suit another similar design of boat. I'll just point out that this dimension here is one of the most critical in the whole design. The anchor comes up like this and then goes over as the winch pulls it down, but it won't start to go over until it reaches a balance point. This has got about 20 mils of clearance, about three quarters of an inch of clearance from that balance point, so you wouldn't want it much lower than this. One of the key things when you're setting out a new design is to test your anchor and figure out just how high this needs to be to clear it because you don't want your anchor banging on the top of it every time it comes up. You're going to have to move the geometry to match your boat. Now I've got a 60 inch Min Cater on here. It's an 80 pound 24 volt unit Min Cater Altera. As you can see, I've got plenty of room. I could fit a 72 inch model here and still have plenty of room for it to fold up. The reason I got a 60 inch instead of a 72 inch is I had this for a smaller boat. If I had to buy another one, I'd buy a 72 inch for this boat, but 60 inch is working okay for me as long as it's not too rough. The extra 12 inches would be a help. Now if you're adapting it to something like a Baseport 640, from what I've seen of them, the sleeve of the cabin starts out a lot closer to the nose, goes up on a shallower angle though, so I think you'll still have plenty of room. This mounts a long way above the deck because of the height of the bracket that I had to put it on. You need to angle your bracket out enough to make sure that your motor unit, your propeller, clear your anchor. That was my mistake and why I had to put in this extra piece here to extend it out further. When I initially did it, I didn't have an anchor there. I followed the instructions that said, make sure your shaft clears your boat. I made sure the shaft cleared the bait, I made sure the shaft cleared the anchor. It just didn't occur to me that I had this problem. I had thought, because it had been a while since I've had it on the other bait, I had thought that it came out and dropped down, so I sort of thought that it would swing out and down and it would be under the anchor before it got there, but all it does is it moves a few inches to get it off the cradle here, out to there, then it turns up and then it tries to come down, of course, right in the road of that when it was sitting back in here. So I needed those extra, oh, about four inches or so there, just to move it out that far. The critical things are the angle out here to move you out to the side of your anchor and the distance out past the anchor. They're the two critical measurements. If you went out to about, say, about there, say, that's out even further still, you could go straight out and still have room, although with a 72 inch, the head here would be sitting real close to the hatch if you went straight down the middle of the boat. By going out a bit further, you could run triangle gussets all the way out there, which would reinforce it a lot. There's a few other considerations there. I don't know whether it'd be a good idea or not. I was happy to go to the side because I thought it was a better way to go. If you're planning to put this on a boat other than a baseboard offshore, you need to have your mincator, have your anchor, and ideally, what I didn't do, I didn't have the anchor for a start, which was a bad mistake, but I also didn't really have any way of clamping this all together roughly in position to get an idea of how it was going to fit before I actually built it. First I had this on was after I built this part of the bracket and then I found that I needed this part.
From the majority of baits I've seen, this will fit, this will work. There's another consideration too, and that is how strong this is on your boat. I spoke to a couple of people at the last boat show from various boat salesmen, asked them had they fitted a Mincoda to one of these base boats or similar boats. Universally the answer was no, we don't know that it will be strong enough to take the load out here. Honestly, I wouldn't have put it there if I had any doubts. I think that's rubbish, but I did have a good look at some of the other boats and I'll just point something out to you. Let's have a look at how thick that is there. That is 5 eighths of an inch, 11 sixteenths actually, and then millimetres that is, well, near as I can get it, about 18, 17 to 18 millimetres. So that's a really, really thick bit of glass in there. It's got a big gap inside, you get your hand up to get these bolts in. I'm sure that this is going to be strong enough, but I did see some at the bait show where the glass was sort of like quarter of an inch thick up here. Those ones, again, look, it's going to hold the anchor. The anchor's got a fair bit of sway out here, and if you're in a good swell and you get reared back on the anchor and the anchor pulls you up hard, I'm sure there's a lot more pressure than uh, 80 pound on a uh, five foot lever. That's 400 foot pounds. But I'm sure you get at least that on the anchor if you're in a bit of rough weather, anchored in a bit of rough weather. Yeah, as I said, I've got no worries at all about that being strong enough. I'm sure it's not going to have any structural problems at all. Just be very aware of your angle out here. You've got to clear the bow rail here, which is going to clear by a mile. Wouldn't have any problem. This was a this was the one that I had an issue with. It's just resting on it as it sits, so there's no pressure there, but it's just resting on it. If I had it moved it over a little bit more, wouldn't have been a bad thing. Give it two or three mils of clearance, but I'm not going to worry about that now. It's on. It's working. Notice that when I did this. I left this part sit out over here so that I could get a lot of reinforcing on this structurally. And on the modified plans, I took this gusset and took it out to the corner here because when I originally designed it, that was going to be the corner. Now this is the corner in the new plans, I've made that bigger and taken it all the way out. And yeah, that's about all I wanted to say about it. It's not that hard to adapt to suit any similar bait. You're just going to have to give it a little bit of thought. Have a look at my videos, see the mistakes I made and try and avoid making them. And if you can, mock one up out of wood or ply or something, just so you can sit everything up there and just see how it's going to work before you actually go and make this and then you might be able to avoid what I had to do and modifying it like that. Well, don't forget if you'd like the plans for this, just subscribe to my channel and go to the Facebook page that's linked in the description below. Send me a PM on that and let me know what your username is that you subscribe to my channel as and I'll send you back a PDF file with the plans for this. They're not engineering drawings, I'm not an engineer, uh, no qualifications at all in this field, but they might serve as a guide to get you started on making your own. I'm not saying you should copy them, I don't know that you can actually because a lot of this stuff here was made from bits and pieces I had left laying around from other projects, some bits must be 30 or 40 years ago. It's all in imperial sizes so you'll be stuck with metric sizes now I reckon so again just have to go on your own gut feelings on it. But if you're capable of making it I'm sure you're capable of making good decisions on that. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I do hope it's inspired you to think about putting a mint coder on your fiberglass half cabin. If you'd like to see more of my videos, you can go to my YouTube channel. It did originally start off to be a fishing channel with lots of fishing in it, but it's ended up being a bit of everything to do with boating and boat maintenance. The early videos aren't real good. I think I've improved a lot since then. I'm getting a bit more used to the whole concept. So anyway, until next time, good fishing.